Matthew chapter 11. Christmas is over, and I'm afraid a lot of the Christmas spirit is over with it. A lot of that giving spirit, I'm afraid, will pass with the Christmas season. I hope not. I pray not. I hope that we are givers day after day, month after month, year after year, that God loves a cheerful giver. You know, you're either born givers or takers. <clears throat> Most people are born takers. You know, a little baby, they want their, their, their uncle's uh, watch or their aunt's glasses. And you take it away from them, they'll just scream and scream. They have to be taught to be givers. So let, let me go on with the message. Matthew eleven sixteen 16, it says, But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you, and you have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and you have not lamented. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, Jesus Christ, Lord, our Lord, God, and Savior, we thank you for that blessed name today, Lord, and thank you for the season as we celebrated your birth, Lord. But now let us celebrate your holy living and your giving and uh, all the precious things that you brought to this world, Lord. Hold us up, Lord, and let us every day be mindful of your uh, tender grace and mercy toward us, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for such a precious gift. Hold me up this morning, Lord, and give me unction to preach. And it's in Jesus' name that I ask these things, and for his sake, amen. Now, many, I'm sure, uh, awoke late Christmas morning and a uh, living room filled with new toys and with uh, boxes, wrapping papers just thrown everywhere. And a lot of you that probably spend hundreds and hundreds of dollar, dollars, perhaps, on your, your child toy, and uh, you look over and the kid is playing with the box. He's playing in the box, just ignoring them. Well, I, I better move on here. And uh, the sound, sound of children laughing, the noise of, of all those uh, latest electronic gadgets you spent your money on, and, and uh, the day had concluded uh, a time, a period of kindness and giving. And, uh, you know, m many said Merry Christmas, had been saying Merry Christmas there for two or three weeks uh, uh, to people they had hardly ever <laughs> spoken to before in their life. You know, it's... Uh, that's kind of strange, isn't it? I, I remember my mother telling a, a story of her grandmother, uh, Gabbard, coming up from Kentucky and never been in a city anywhere, came up to Cincinnati, and, and as she'd walk up and down the street, everybody she'd meet would say, how do, how do, how do, and that's all she was doing because so many people just how do, how do. Well, that's kind of how we were with Merry Christmas. You know, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, whoever you are. Merry Christmas. And, and, and it, that... That's gone now. Hmm. Merry Christmas. Churches handed out Christmas baskets. A toys for tots. Shop with a cop. Ruth Lyons Children's Fun. Man, there was just all kinds of giving going on. Folks gave to the Salvation Army. They gave to their hairdresser, mail carrier. And for a few weeks, we joyed in acts of kindness and giving. Now, this coming week, the streets will be filled with a lot of old brown decaying Christmas trees out by the curb or out by the roadside, by the, the garbage cans. Remnants of the holiday season, the gift boxes bulging out of the trash bags. <coughs> Those old brown Christmas trees. Man, how you enjoyed that, <clears throat> that tree. When I was a kid, I, I loved that. You, <clears throat> you tried every trick in the book to try to keep that tree alive and green. You, <clears throat> well, some people put aspirin down in them and cope different ways they had to try to keep those trees green. And, uh, but still, that tree began to turn brown. You could see the death in that tree and... and <clears throat> 
When you'd put up that tree, see, the problem was it didn't have any roots. That tree was a temporal thing, just like much of the giving spirit of the rest of us in the Christmas season. And, you know, uh, the roots had been cut off that tree, and without the roots, the tree was just destined. It, It was destined to wither and to die. Despite all, all the efforts to sustain the joy and despite all the care and attention to keep that uh, tree alive and glowing, uh, w- without roots it would simply fade and die. And like the trees that we will soon see along the curbsides, no longer green but brown, withered away. There are many uh, having experienced the joy and fulfillment of giving for the for the brief Christmas season will soon settle back into their normal, non-giving, non-caring routine. You know, and it's pretty much a worldwide thing. People have lost their natural affection for other people. We've lost our our empathy for the plight of those less fortunate than we are. They won't remember the plight of the needy anymore. No more food baskets to families that might need them. Uh, The holiday parties are over. The greeting cards are gone from the mailboxes. And saddest of all, the only time for some that the name of Christ will ever be mentioned in the coming year will be in a blasphemous oath taking the Lord's name in vain. Well, you say, preacher, what what has happened to Christmas? Well, just like a tree without roots, a lot of America has lost the fact that we're rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ, the God of the Bible, and that's what this country was founded on. Just as a tree without roots soon wither and die, so does the spirit of man who is not rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. A new spirit has taken over, that spirit of man and that natural man which is so corrupt naturally. You, you know, I remember as a boy those TV shows, righteousness always prevailed. You know, the good guys always won, the cowboys always wore the white hats. And the TV shows today, it's, it's like it's, there's not any good guys. It's bad guys against worse guys or bad guys against other bad guys. But the spirit of a nation that is not rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ is bound to fail. We need to come back to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3, 17 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Have we lost our love? Love, what a thing. Now, we may put on an air of joy and we may promote peace on earth and announce goodwill toward men as well we should. And we may present ourselves as a nation of godly men, but we've got to be rooted in something. To many, that Christmas spirit is always seasonal. It comes and it goes. And I don't care how much money we spend on gifts. I don't care how many food baskets we hand out. don't care how many sacks of clothes we give to uh, the needy or how many turkey dinners are, are served up until this nation turns back to God and to Jesus Christ, until men and women of this nation turn to God, we're gonna have troubled times. Till the boys and girls of America are brought up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, we're going to have troubled times. The Christmas seasons uh, will become shorter and shorter, uh, always following the latest toy or, or, or fad. And, and every, I don't even know what, it, what was the big thing this year. You know, well, we've seen Tickle Me Elmo and Pokemon and PlayStation 3. What's it up to PlayStation what now? What is it? Five? PlayStation 5. iPods, iPhones. 
I this and I that's always I. Commercialism, uh, sometimes it comes so overwhelming even to, to Christians. You know, at, at what point in history did Christmas start leaving out Jesus Christ? I suspect early on in Luke 2.10 it says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Hey, some of us missed it. Some folks missed the memo. They didn't get it. World leaders cry, Peace, peace, and, and their attempts are in vain. Peace, peace, and there is no peace. Ezekiel 3, 6, 13, 16, rather, to wit the prophets of Israel which shall prophesy concerning Jerusalem and which see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, saith the Lord God. You've heard preachers say this before. I will say it again today. There is no peace without the prince of peace. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Many return to work, returning to work this week without ever knowing the meaning of or the purpose for the birth of Jesus Christ. The Lord said himself that he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Another place he said he came to destroy the works of the devil. He did both. He got the victory over sin and over death. Man, I'm, I'm, I've, I've done so many funerals. I have one this week. I'm just so sick of death, so tired of death. And that's because of sin. Jesus Christ gave us victory over that death. You don't have to die. This body of flesh can die away, but you can be born again and renewed in the image of God and uh, have a promise of everlasting life. How long is everlasting? Brother Jeremiah in a Sunday school talked about eternal security. How long is everlasting? And I give unto them eternal life. How long is that? And they shall never perish. Them whom God has perfected forever. How long is that? Many return to work without ever knowing the meaning of of uh, why Jesus Christ came uh, and their lives simply returned to the, the hopelessness of this world because they were not rooted in Jesus Christ. Once again, look to uh, perhaps to, uh, to all the wrong places for help. Like the country song, looking for love in all the wrong places. Uh, a lot of folks are looking for peace and happiness and, and joy in all the wrong places. Some will look to their political leaders. Many will uh, be seeking out psychologists and psychiatrists to understand, try to get a handle on their despair and their hopelessness. The Christmas season for many is filled with sadness. People losing loved ones. Brother Floyd lost his sister-in-law. and Sister Short just lost her brother. Just a few months ago, we uh, lost Jeff's mother, my sister-in-law. Sad times, melancholy times, times, but they're times of, of reflections for a lot of people, reflections on, on what their life could have been. Some wasted years without love, without hope, but the love of God is still here today. It's shed abroad in the hearts of all the believers, and it's God commendeth his love toward us. It's still shed abroad, and it's toward us this morning. It's toward uh, all the whosoever wills. Christmas without Christ would, would have to be the saddest time of all. Just like the trees with uh, no root and no hope for continued life, Oh, uh, perhaps like the tree, they may shine for a season and they may appear for a moment in, in beauty and they may sparkle with brilliance and glimmer for a time. 
But without Jesus Christ, a glimmer won't last. Their glory is but fleeting. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1.24, For all flesh is grass. All flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. Many will return this week to empty jobs, empty homes, empty lives, because it was a Christmas for them without Jesus Christ. We're in a new year. Brand new year. This year may bring a, a lot of uh, glorious uh, discoveries, maybe uh, great technological advances, and it may bring uh, medical science to new heights. Maybe they'll figure out this pandemic thing and put a stop to that. It may bring computer technology beyond the, the bounds of all understanding. You'd never know what the year is going to bring, but sadly I fear we're becoming, as the, the prophet said, we're becoming ever learning without a, ever able to come to the knowledge of the truth. For another thing that this new year will bring is Soul after soul after soul slipping off into eternity without God and without hope, without Jesus Christ. We should purpose in our hearts as the Lord's church to try to do something about that. We need to continue to declare the name of Jesus Christ to look for open doors to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ to to sow in, to witness, and to be lights into a dark world. The Bible says, but we have a more sure word of prophecy, that you do, uh, do, you do well that you take heed as into a light, into a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. We're a light that should be shining into a dark place, and this world is getting darker each year with each generation, it's getting darker. Another thing that this new year will bring is all, the, all those who have heard the gospel and rejected the gospel message. What a sad thing. There may be some sitting here this morning who have, have, have heard the gospel message. You've heard it preached and you've heard it preached, but you've never let it touch your heart. You've heard it. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But it says a man believeth with a heart. Confession is made under righteousness. With a heart man believeth under righteousness. Another thing this year will bring as a, a new spin on the old lies. The old lies that Satan has propagated since the Garden of Eden. The new world order will march on toward old world disorder as it was in the days of Noah. God destroyed the world for its wickedness. I remember hearing a preacher preach a message and it made a lot of sense to me. You know, God didn't. He said, God didn't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah for its wickedness. He destroyed them because he couldn't find ten righteous men. Hmm. What's that about? There, there, there may come a time in this country where God cannot find ten righteous men. Surely the church will be called out soon. Hmm. The human heart will continue to be filled with lust and violence, with loneliness and despair. Life to those who are dead in trespass and sin can only come through Jesus Christ, the only one that can forgive you your sins. The Bible says of our time in 1 Timothy 3, 2, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. There it is. Fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. 
1 Timothy 3.13, the Bible says, the evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. For many, I'm afraid it'll be just another year without being rooted in Jesus Christ, and that can only end one way. All the best efforts of man will fade and die just as the trees have turned brown and have withered along the curbs and along the roadsides. No roots. Santa Claus can't help. Dr. Fauci can't help. Dr. Oz can't help. Congress can't solve the problem. The Pope is powerless. Medical science is useless. Jesus said in John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Hey, if you're saved this morning, you need, to, you, you need to get back on duty. You need to get re-upped in the army of God, as they say. Many here have never celebrated the birth of Christ because they've never allowed Christ. You've never allowed Christ to be born in you, to abide in you. John 15, 4, the Lord said, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Are you rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ this morning? Or is it a seasonal thing where you just want to go along with the crowd at Christmas time? Something that will simply fade like the trees. I pray that you did not have a Christmas without Jesus Christ this year. Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Here it is again, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. Where, where are you rooted today? Isaiah eleven ten and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. I'm sure that for some of us, maybe we may have seen our last Christmas. Where we're missing some folks today that were here this time last year. They've gone on, gone on to be with their Lord. It's time to wake up. Wake up to the Lord and his work and his goodness and his grace. And to see see clearly the darkness around us. And let your light so shine. Like a candle that's been hid under a bushel, the Bible says, under a basket. You, You need to remove that thing that is covering that light of Jesus Christ shine to this world. The world needs it as never before needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm done this morning. If everyone would like to stand up, if you're here today, maybe you're here and you've just never given your heart to Jesus Christ, it'd be a good morning to do that. It'd be a good morning to say, Lord, I've, I've heard about you and I've heard preaching about you. My mama, some of my people have talked about you, Lord, but I've never made you my personal Savior. Today it would be a good day to step out and say, I just want to identify with Jesus Christ as my Savior. Maybe you're here and you've got a burden on your heart. There's people that you need to pray for. Won't you come? The altar's open this morning. Won't you come?